It's Flying Friday, and today's flying-related movie is Pan. A different type of flying movie today, a movie more about learning to fly than actual flying. Visually, it's a fantastic adventure. Every few minutes, there's something new and wonderful to see, and in massive 3D detail. This is many films. There's a war film with a ship sailing on the clouds through the London Blitz, and we get some wonderful shots of fighter jets flying through the air. Later, it goes into more of a Indiana Jones mode, and we're running up ropes and climbing through terrific scaffolding that shows up so well in 3D. All that kind of imperfect building with large spaces in between. Um, it, it's not translucent, but it almost feels translucent because you can see right through it. And look at this high tower we climb up in. This movie does heights very well, which is good because there always seems to be a reason to get up into the air. Of course, once sailing, we get a taste of Pirates of the Caribbean ship rigging always looks so fantastic in 3D. All those little ropes dangling make for a nice stereo mess to look at. And when we are out there sailing across the sky, the big stuff is shown with just a touch of hyper stereo. And check out this blast right into our faces. Wow, how can you not love a 3D movie that's willing to do that? And here... We have a brief but very neat moment. It's fun to see stereo through an imperfect window. You can see the ship get slightly warped in the glass. In some movies, perhaps also this one, windows are CGI, so they can be removed for conversion and layered back in after. I really can't imagine doing a good conversion job with this sort of thing without having that option. I also noticed on this table, they, however, did nothing with that crystal ball, and they treated its reflections as if it were a solid object. I guess it's a small thing. Who would notice? I noticed... Our trip through this adventure's greatest hits continues with a bit of a journey to the center of the earth, meeting some wild birds out in the forest, and they give us a suitable shout-out, of which they do a great job here of preserving the look of rich forest foliage. Check out this steep cliff. This is a moment I feel really only works in 3D. The distance just isn't obvious enough when seen flat to feel dangerous. The whole scene is an obvious avatar homage, giving us some fun bird writing moments. Uh, really, this is one big homage after another to other movies. I also detected moments from Moulin Rouge with Hugh Jackman leading a choir. It tries to set up a Star Wars type dynamic with a warrior princess, a rogue teaming up with a boy wonder, though it never quite gelled for me. Of course, being Peter Pan, we eventually get some Superman scenes. They even look like they were filmed in Superman's Fortress of Solitude, which had a door that felt like it came out of the Fellowship of the Rings. Now, this crazy amount of variety gave it all a circus feel with an almost Tim Burton flair for a style. This tent was a fantastic stereo moment that looks like it could have come out of any number of Burton films with the swirls leading the eye up through the roof. The use of stereo intermingling with fabrics and shadows was used several times in this movie and was always dazzling to see. Even in more subtle moments, the 3D was always impressive. I just loved the steam in the background of this shot. You could clearly see it separated from its background, and it just looked so natural, yet so spectacular in its understated way. The story ended up feeling underwhelming, though. How odd. I think because the adventure rarely felt like it was a real decision on anyone's part. As in the beginning of the movie, Peter Pan just literally gets plucked from one place and thrown into another, and that just seems to be the ongoing motif here. 
It was like watching people on a roller coaster fixed to a rail and howling as they go up and down and all around. But let me just stop there and say, take any five minutes from anywhere in this movie and it's a blast all on its own. That moment will be a lot of fun. But five minutes turns into 10, into 20, and into an hour and onwards, and the brain just seemed to realize there's really not much to think about here. It's all a fireworks display. It actually reminded me of, uh, ooh, I can't remember the name of this documentary I saw. Maybe someone can knows it and can write it in the comments. It was about this guy, a lifelong loner. And when he died, they discovered he had spent his life writing and illustrating a massive fantasy book, thousands and thousands of pages of this. But Often, he would write just by taking snippets out of books he liked, a paragraph here, a line there, and he just compiled it all into his own ongoing work of crazy scrapbook fiction. And that's what this felt like, a massive scrapbook of favorite moments from other films. The ultimate fan movie sort of shoehorned into this Peter Pan universe. And it could have worked. And maybe it was even just one rewrite away from launching an amazing series. It certainly felt like it expected a second movie. And it, I felt it came close, like they almost had it. But in a way, these are the best kind of adventure movies. Because it is like being in a park, where you just sort of let the setting tickle the imagination and soak in the landscapes. Your left brain sleeps and the other side begins to play. And like magic begins to propose other weird connections between things. It inspires other movies, other stories, other ideas, which only happens when we give ourselves permission to visit Neverland. <laughs> 